thank you God thank you for the moment like this God we thank you even for the praise and worship team we pray God that you will refresh them again for it's in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Please. Thank you. We can be seated. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome us all, those who are physically here, and those following us online that we are here for the first revival meeting and it will go for three days in this month of March. I'm Charles Wafula Sikuku Mimeokoka Yesu Nibwana I'm married to Ross Sikuku, who is also in our Mideast. And we have four nations with us. They may not be here for today, but they will be joining us as we move on. Let me take this early opportunity to thank Bishop, who is in the house, and Pastor Alice in absentia, and the entire pastor. Oh, Okay, okay, sorry. Pastor Alice is in the house. And the pastoral team for this opportunity that uh, I can share within uh, the, this revival of March. Uh, I know a few of you wonder uh, whether I'm feeling cold. <laughs> I think uh, it all happened on 14th of November 2020 when I acquired what you are seeing. Uh, but it's the first time I think to come with this regalia in this church. And we thank God. There was a time Bishop asked me, I said I would, I would not, but today, yesterday I felt I should because God was directing me to do work that is related to this regalia in this meeting. So we are in for a good time. So those who are watching us, we also believe in faith that you will also be refreshed in one way or another. Uh, the topic of my uh, the topic that will guide us through the three days is the strength for the church to mount up on wings. The strength for the church to mount up on wings. Of course, I will give you subtopics of each day, but also allow me to thank us all those who've walked with me in one way or another or by prayer in this journey and uh, I single out Bishop Jimmy Kimani and Pastor Alice who've always been with us in all our functions in this ministry I call Jerbal generation ministry of evangelizing the world through writing of books. So far, that's why you saw I came like I was having too many things. So far, uh, I've written uh, nine books. Uh, and that has taken a span of about less than three years. The first book is titled Wake Up, Jerbal Generation. Rekindle the Big Five altar uh, fires. Then the second one is titled 
a small cloud of abundance of rain. Number three, actually they come in that order. At the gate, stairway to find destiny. Things happen at the gate. Number four, the fall, the rise. We fall, but we, we rise. Number five, behold the new thing. You can be on an old page, but behold the new thing. Number six, which ended our year 2019, all the six were launched in 2019. Of course, two here, then six in Safari Park, a new song, a new song. Then last year, we were not sleeping. So we have one more book titled, The Church Under Siege, or Siege. <laughs> the church under siege or siege. Uh, then, but the interesting thing behind it, it says the day of good news. The church under siege, but the day of good news. And then, second last is deep waters, and then there is drawing you us out deep waters drawing yours out and last but not least stories in my story those of you who know where I come from I'm just a village boy but out of a village boy many things have happened amen stories in my story Right from Chiomuluchi until now you see me standing before you. It has taken the grace of God. All these books are available. Uh, of course, each book is 500 shillings. But uh, we've deliberately decided to make them affordable to all of us. So if you would be lucky to get nine, nine times 500, that is for 500. Is that correct? But we'll be giving the nine books at 3,000 shillings. Nine books at 3,000 shillings. Yes. And uh, we'll be giving three books at 1,000. So if you choose to buy one, you'll buy 500. But if you choose to buy three, 1,000. If you choose to buy eight and nine, you go for where they would go at three three thousand shillings. I think that is it. And uh, of course, we've not thrown in the towel yet. We are writing three more books. One of them is titled Where Are the Fathers? and that one is almost coming out of the kitchen. Uh, Reverend Alice has already finished the forward. So that tells you, probably next time you stand here, Bishop, you, you, you will be launching a, that particular a book. Of course, on 17th, we are the one to invite us all. On 17th of September, 2021, God is helping us to put up a Jerubal Generation Resource Center in the Kitale, Matunda home. We shall be, Bishop will be unveiling the, the Jerubal Generation Resource Center on 17th of September 2021. So welcome. Of course, this year's theme, which comes from Isaiah 40, 31, says, the, 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 the verse says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 
that one. And that's where the topic comes from. Of course, the, the topic I said, the strength for the church to mount up on wings. Probably now we need to find out when you talk of the strength for the church. You know, now times you talk of church, people may see themselves out. But if you look at Matthew 18, Matthew 16, 18, Peter, uh, Jesus himself said, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. And when you look at Ephesians 5 to 3, it says the husband is the head of the house, uh, as also Christ is head of the church, and is the savior of the body. When you look at that, it tells you something about the church. That the church may not be a building, it's a corporate body of believers, you and I. So when we are talking of the strength for the church to mount up on wings, we are simply saying the strength for you and me to mount up on, on wings. So what is expected of the church? If one looks at First Chronicles 12.32, there the, the Bible says, of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. Therefore, as a church, we are expected to discern the times we are living in and we know we are living in the times of mounting up. Two, just like the sons of Issachar, who did things in, in a unified manner, we should also in one accord know what to do in order to mount up on wings this year 2021. I will cover the topic in three subtopics. One, the church coming out of hiding. That one we shall tackle it today. The church doing the right thing. God willing, we shall take up that one tomorrow. Then finally, the church singing a new song. So today we shall be looking at the church coming out of hiding. The church doing the right thing tomorrow. Then on Friday, the church singing a new song. Uh, this morning, when I was in... Uh, morning glory I, uh, within there I purpose that in the next three days I will speak the word of God which has creative power the word of God which has creative power it is this word of God that will create new things in our midst so as we are here Expect a new thing to be created by God. So, in these times, all we need is the word of God. And now I want to go into the word of God. I have not yet gone into the word of God. So, I want us to look at John chapter 4, 1 to 42. And we shall read all verses. Because we've said we want to do the word of God. John 4, 1 to 42. I'm sure it's already on the screen, so we go. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the, the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again to Kaliri. But he needed to go through Samaria. I think you should let's underline that one. That he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria which is called Sijar. I used to call it Saiga. The other day I was being corrected, supposed to be Sijar. 
near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied from his journey sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. We may also need to underline that. Give me a drink. For his disciples, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to, to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have said, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you have now is not your husband. In that, in that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. Our salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will, let her, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and say to the men, I would wish to underline that, that the woman left her water pot, went away into the city, and say to the men, uh, as we came today, and those who are also following us up, we will not want to go away with our water pots. We will leave them here today, at the altar. All our water pots, we shall leave them here today. Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do, you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you, do you not say, there are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps, receives wages, and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I 
ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then he said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said. For we ourselves have heard him. And we know that, he, this, that this, this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Father, we've read your word. By your Holy Spirit, speak to us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I've just been reminded of some instances in 2006 as I was, read, as I was reading the word. Uh, at this time, we were having a meeting in Kisumu and um, the minister is responsible for housing and urban development, the whole of Africa, I had assembled there. Then we were to make a keynote address for the late Honorable uh, Shidanda. And then we made a very long speech. And the director at that time insisted that a keynote address must be long. And he indeed we ensured that it's long. And it was loaded. But by the time he finished reading, he was sweating. You hear that? He was sweating. Just like the way now I'm sweating. Because the speech was long. <laughs> when one looks at uh, Genesis uh, chapter 3, in fact the whole of it, in the question, where are you? you will see that God had come, it actually come down to look for the naked Adam and Eve who were hiding from the presence of God in the, among the trees of the Garden of Eden. Therefore, the trees represented the mindset of rebellion to God. Man hiding in the trees in the garden of Eden. When you move on to Judges chapter 6, if you read almost chapter 1, verse 1 up to 27, in the greeting, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. The angel of the Lord had come down looking for Gideon, who was hiding in the wine press. And he was hiding from the Midianites, they are oppressors. Hiding. And the wine press represented the mindset of inferiority complex. The mindset of inferiority complex, fear, worry, bitterness, excuses, doubts, and complaining. And one word for this is hopelessness. Hopelessness. If you move on to Second Kings chapter 17, verse 1, in the statement, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. God himself had come down to look for prophet Elijah, who was hiding in the foreign land of Seraphath, of Sidon. The foreign land of Seraphath of Sidon represents the mindset of double-mindedness as it was in the days of King Ahab when he married Jezebel of Sidon. So at that time, Israel served Baal and served God. So if the man of God was hiding in the foreign land, he was just, God was using him to stand in for the Israelites who had now gotten married to, the, to Baal. Therefore, the relationship between God and the Israelites actually had died. And that's why this, the man of God was, was, was with a widow. 
there was a time I had asked who will admire the life of a prophet. You are told to go and stay in a widow's house. If I went staying in a widow's house, I would be told I have married that widow. In the story that we read in chapter 4, Jesus purposed to go through Samaria. And in that purpose, he came to the city of Sijar and specifically sat at the well of Jacob. I want to believe that Jesus still moves. He must have been, he is, he must have been moving from point A to point B, but he purposed to pass through Kenya, come to Nairobi, and he is in our midst as we speak today. That Jesus Christ. And he sat at the well and waited until the Samaritan woman came. Jesus Christ who does in change, who is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, he's here seated waiting for you and for me until we arrive. In fact, he was here before we arrived. And he's waiting for you and for me who is seated wherever you are. And of course, even those who are following us online, and remember, he's not seated here because he's tired or he's feeling weary. No. There's no way. Because there's no way God can get tired. And scripture says so in Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And remember too, he's not seated here because he wants any water from, from us. Because Jesus himself is the well. He's the well. Or is the altar the well or the altar of living water. And that's why when we look at Isaiah 55, 1, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Whenever uh, money appears like it's, it's getting lost, I like quoting this a lot. Then John 7, 7 says, On the last day, that great feast of the day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood, uh, stood and cried uh, out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Remember where we, we read, and I told you to pause a little. told you to pause a little and said, Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Why Jesus asked for the drink from the lady? Because he had seen her with a, a water pot. A nyungu. So she must have come with her water pot. And I did say, you must have come with one also. Because I also came with my own water pot. And we will not go away with our water pots. We shall leave them here. That's what we'll do today. When one looks at the water pot for this lady, it symbolized the mindset of things of old the mindset of things 
of old. Number one, the Samaritan woman held on to wear some tribalism, and that is hatred that existed between the Jews and the Samaritans. Could we also be holding on to the same? The Samaritan woman held on to the wearsome tradition of drawing water from the Jacob where well, she knew she needed a vessel to draw water from from the Jacob where well, which was deep as she said. Do we still also think the well is deep and you need a vessel? Three, the Samaritan woman held on to the where some religious belief that the place of worship was for, for Samaritan was for Samaritan was on the mountain, and for the Jews was in, in Jerusalem. Do we also say that the worship must be in this corner? It must be there. I must sit there. The Samaritan woman held on to where some practice of prostitution and the short-lived satisfaction thereof. They will always say, how did their things will always look greener. I was here one day and I asked, why can't you also make you uh, inside of you, of you as big green? Then the last one, the Samaritan woman held on to the where some practice that a man was better than a woman. In fact, the, the disciples confirmed that. At that, uh, those days, the Jews could thank God just because that a man would stand and say, I'm not a woman. Or I'm not a Samaritan. And they would thank God. And those are the things of old. Represented by the water pot. In the discourse, of course, Jesus is the one who initiated it. And the, the, the Samaritan woman was drawn into it. So what was happening there was the, the Samaritan woman was drawing to Jesus and Jesus was drawing to the Samaritan woman. Just as it says in James 4, 8 uh, A that draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Today as servant of God I came to call the church you and I with how we're some marriage to the following five foreign husbands so that we move to Christ. We leave the foreign husbands the same way the Israelites during the days of Elijah did. And in our case, we are married to the following husbands. Husband number one. The husband called riches or wealth husband number two called sexual pleasures husband number three called witchcraft for power and control husband number four which was seen in Kidion called inferiority a complex fear, worry, bitterness, excuses, and doubts. The latest husband or the new kid on the block is COVID-19. That is the latest husband we've decided to get onto. And each one of us, in that regard, we will want to take our portion and bring to the altar. So that we, we don't go out of this place with foreign husbands. 
so that we bring them to the altar, a place of exchange. And we don't want that piece of paper. We don't want you to write your name. God knows you. So once you have your piece of paper, you just bring it to the altar. God knows you. And I think in this regard, uh, I had come with a nyungu, <laughs> which, which we may, uh, Bishop, we may easily uh, destroy. We will work on the nyungu tomorrow. We are not going to work on the nyungu today. I don't know. Let, let, let me have the, 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 the nyungu. Yes. Yeah. And this is the water pot that uh, stands in for the things of old, things of, of the past. And when we do that, in heaven, it's being registered that we are drawing near to God. We are drawing near to God. And he will draw near to us. Because for us to mount up on wings, we need to be near to God. And this pot will be here, Bishop, allowing it will be here until tomorrow to allow those who may want to tap in. I will be the first one because for me to preach this sermon, I first of all preach to myself, get convinced because I also want to divorce foreign husbands because I want at the end of this year, I want to have mounted up on wings and evidence will be there and people will see it. So tomorrow, when we will come, then we will see from scripture what we will actually do. Then also today, I came to call the church, you and me, with how were some things of old, of course, traditions. At one time, I realized uh, I could take bishop, I could take leave or, uh, around the 15th of, of July during the circumcision year. And I will tell Ross way back in Yuma, Mimi ni ende ni pambane na circumcision, ikisha isha then I come back. In fact, if anybody went to, to, to my file, those early days, they will realize I used to do that. I used to do that. But if you read now, stories in my story, I have written there a chapter titled Facing the Knife. And then I have made a prayer of repentance on behalf of my community. And I have denounced circumcision. I have denounced traditions that do not bring glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So, we will also, using that one paper, we we will also uh, be coming out of tradition. We will also be coming out of religion. I've met quite some people. It's like them. Uh, Three. The other day I was listening to some lady and she told me about you know, we talk of uh, drunkenness. Drunkenness, we imagine that when you, it's only when you take busa or whatever. Drunkenness is when you do anything beyond measure. So I want also to, to take it that prostitution does not necessarily mean lying everywhere. You can be a prostitute in many forms. I can be a prostitute in many forms. And this is something that we will also want to deal with. And then, of course, you saw there the issue of woman, we discriminate. I think I've been here. Then I said, I look down upon Ross just because she is a woman. So discrimination on the basis of gender and then discrimination on the basis of tribe. We also want to deal uh, with any observable or persistent challenge or trend in your life or in your family. 
So that one sheet, we wanted that it would stand in for that. Is it joblessness? Yani you may tafuta kazi. Sasa wo na kaa tumutu mwenye anatafuta ka kazi. Oh, ear in, ear out. That is what we will bring today in the port. And is it terminal disease? That is what we will bring in the port, water port. Is it perennial deaths? At one time, in this first book, we buried a lady, I found a note, it's written here. I found a note in our home indicating how each one of us were going to die. And we were to start dying in 2001. I was, I'm sure I've shared this. And here, Ross and I were given October 2001 to have died. Now I'm wondering, did we really die? But in August, surprisingly, we buried one of our sisters in August. Then the following year, in October, we buried another one. It was so scary. Until when we heard a song, Madabao, Madabaho Gan Hayo, then we took it up. In fact, that's when I was now developing an interest in reading the Gideon, the judges. Judges, of course, most of us think Gideon only did one action. This book tells you Gideon did five actions. And from the five actions, of course, we can find out. So, if we feel we are going through deaths, whether as a country, particularly this time, whether as a church, as a community, or as a family, the chance to bring to the water pot. Is it stagnation? You don't seem to move. You seem not to move. You may be... You know, you want to be a, a woman or get married, but you are just a girl for a long time. Or you want to be a man, but you are a boy for a long time. That is stagnation. You want to bring that here in the boat so that God can change it around. And of course, those who are following us online, I realized, Bishop, some of us are also hiding in the online. We want to call people from online to be coming here physically, those who can, who must come. So we will bring their issues in the port. So if you, who is on online and you are supposed to hear, to be here today, to be here on Sunday, please make up your an effort. It's you we are addressing. We want this church to be full and then we build another one. Or we do five, ten services. So that is something we must also look at. So we want to call the people from online who are in their bedrooms. There is no fellowship in the bedroom. When I'm here greeting Bishop, you, you are, how can you greet Bishop online? There is no greeting. You cannot greet Pastor Millicent online. Come and see her here. So we will allow you, whoever you are. I want to believe that tomorrow this hall will be full because it's you who would have come from wherever you are. You will leave your office early. You will leave your home. You will leave wherever. And that one who has never come to church ever since Corona started in March, now a year. You are celebrating a year, not coming to church, just like NMS, Nairobi Metropolitan Services, we celebrated one year. You are also celebrating a year for not having come to church. Hear this and hear it today, that we have a chance to come out of the fear of Corona. Today, we want to deal with it because we know when we draw out of those hiding places and come to God, we are candidates to be, to mount up, to mount up. How, how will Bishop give you a chance to preach 
when you cannot even come here yourself and then you want to say you will be a pastor a pastor of online that's a hard one but definitely we have to be hard and that's why I said I came here to speak the word of God so that people can come out of their hiding so tomorrow I expect that this place will be full so that people hear the word of God so that we all mount up just like the sons of Issachar they did it in one accord Bishop is not interested in mounting up alone he wants all of us including you and me and I want to invite Pastor Millicent who will lead us or let me invite the praise and worship team so that they lead us in this song I surrender all so we want to bring all our burdens to the pulpit in an order in view of the times so that we bring that into this pot and I will invite uh, I will invite our bishop to come to the pulpit when the song will be going on as you bring I want him to stand here as the man of God because he will be standing here as an apostle he will be standing here as a pastor he will be representing God that you are you and I even me I will come down you and I we will come to Jesus and Jesus is going to do a new thing in your life I would want to guarantee that one all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence